Hi, and welcome to Category Management Knowledge Group's weekly Category Management Tip. If you're not familiar with CMKG, we provide category management training solutions that are driven from a foundation of accredited e-learning courses. I'm Sue Nichols, the President and Owner of Category Management Knowledge Group. I love everything about category management, so every week I try to find some relevant learnings on category management related topics that you may find interesting. Today's topic is about space management. This isn't tips on space management, technical skills, because although my career did start in space management many years ago, I'm definitely not an expert on technical functioning of the software. But I do appreciate the importance of understanding it. Unfortunately, many marketing, sales, and even category management professionals may think it's not really a part of their job to think about the shelf. Leave it for the space planners, shelf analysts, and planogrammers, right? Wrong. Space management relates to planogram development. Many folks see planograms as being a picture of the shelf. This is a very limited use of some highly sophisticated softwares, and hopefully by the end of the tip, you'll appreciate why. Also, space management needs to be understood by more than just the space management professionals, planogrammers, and space analysts. They may be experts on the software and on shelving, but a foundational understanding of space management needs to resonate across the organization including sales, marketing, and category management within suppliers and retailers. The definition of a planogram can vary based on how they're used within organizations. In basic terms, planograms are a graphic image or diagram that includes fixtures and products that are specific to a category. Planograms can turn from a graphic image into an analytics engine that populates sales or movement data, which then enables the user to calculate empowering information that's associated with movement on the shelf. They can even become marketing tools through the usage of graphics and signage in the planogram. So a planogram can be everything from a pretty picture to a highly powerful analysis tool. Unfortunately, many organizations use the planogram more from the pretty picture perspective without utilizing the powerful analytics that are available. And many organizations are not even aware that the analytics are available. But it's the organizations who understand and use these analytics wisely that are separated as the great from the good because they understand the category from a very different and strategic perspective. With the correct inputs, planograms can help both retailers and suppliers become more strategic on the shelf. First of all, you need to understand the retailer's shelf strategies. Different retailer strategies can directly affect the shelf layout and overall targets and objectives for a planogram. Next, the retailer's fixture dimensions, including section sizes, gondola measurements, and shelf measurements need to be input. Lastly, product information needs to be included. Much detail is required at a product level to maximize the use of the planogram software. The most important thing to note here is that the addition of data as well as segmentation at an item level will turn a planogram from a pretty picture into a strategic analytic tool. Let me show you how and why. With the correct inputs, planograms can help both retailers and suppliers understand the shelf at a much more strategic level. By segmenting the item level data based on the consumer decision tree, the planograms can then be developed based on the most important consumer segments. Here's an example of a consumer decision tree in dog food. It's important to note that this is only being used as an example and it's not an actual correct consumer decision tree. So let's assume that these are the key decisions that a shopper is making when purchasing dog food. Those consumer decisions can then be used to strategically set up the shelf based on how the consumer thinks about and shops the category. So the consumer decision tree is pivotal in creating strategic planograms. Are you using your consumer decision trees in your planograms? Many suppliers marketing teams have invested in consumer decision trees and sometimes retailers as well, but they may not even share them internally, never mind with their retail partners. And that's truly where these decision trees will have the largest impact on the shopper, at the shelf. So the next time that you invest in a consumer decision tree, make sure you take it all the way through your assortment and then right into your shelf setups. Here's some other product data requirements in a planogram. Remember, it's the product data that makes the planograms come alive. Additional product data requirements include the average unit sold per week per store, the cost per case and the average unit price, as well as the units per case. Once this data is made available at a product level, the analytic possibilities are incredible. There are literally hundreds of automatic calculations available within the more sophisticated shelving software programs once you've input those few data points. 
Some organizations opt not to input those few measures because of the extra time and resources that it takes. But without those data inputs, your planogram stays as a pretty picture, and none of these analytics are possible. But think about how more compelling this information would be if you were able to measure it and better understand it. It would help sales and marketing understand the implications of innovation on the shelf. When I was with P&G and we launched a compact laundry detergent, one of the biggest selling stories was the impact on the shelf by moving to a more condensed product. I remember another time when we launched a product that didn't consider the shelf and was too tall by over two inches to fit on most retailers' bottom shelves. It would also help to understand internal brand results versus competition and across segments. What are the biggest strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats on the shelf that need to be understood by the brand and marketing folks and perhaps remedied? Both sales and marketing could benefit from a better understanding of the shelf. So space management isn't just for space management professionals within consumer packaged goods organizations. Anyone involved in developing or selling in innovation or strategic category business plans need to be educated about the retailer shelf. This doesn't mean they need training on the shelf software itself, but in shelving principles, best practices, and some basic analytics. Retailers also need to be educated about the shelf, beyond a pretty picture. By developing data-rich planograms that include key measures that are important to the retailer, Decisions that affect the shelf will be made more strategically and therefore implementation at store level will be more successful because it will actually work for the stores. Space management understanding should once again go beyond the scope of the space management team so that different functions within the retailer truly understand the decisions that they make and how they affect the shelf. So that's it for this week's tip. I hope that you agree that space management needs to be a fundamental that is better understood outside of the space management team for both retailers and suppliers. Remember, it's not just a pretty picture. Also, space management should be understood across all functions. We have a great course on space management that gives participants the ability to strategically understand shelf space without getting into the technical requirements. We also have a more advanced one that gives participants best practices for designing practical shelving recommendations that simplify the shopping experience and also optimize category sales and shelf productivity. Both of these courses are very popular with our students. We're not going to be having a session next week because of our spring break in Calgary, but the next week's session is going to show you some analytics and pricing. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my blog. Or if you're interested in category management training, please visit our website. We have great topics and programs that will not only help you fill in the gaps if you didn't understand all of the examples I showed you today, but if you want some great category management training programs that are all accredited by the Industry Association. Finally, we're very active in LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, so please connect with us. Thanks for viewing today's tip. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.